yeah, I'm going to tell you a ghost story now, if that's all right. Um, so, um, I'll ch- feck it, I'll tell you two. I've had two brushes with the occult. The, f- <laughs> <laughs> the first one, um, has anyone ever done a Ouija board before? G- give me a hands up. Oh, amazing, one person at the back. Chicken. Um, how old were you when you first did the Ouija board? It was six months ago. It was six months ago? <laughs> Jesus, how old are you? 27 now chicken. That's a bit old now to be experimenting with the occult. (laughs) (laughs) Ouija boards, right? It's a bit like solvent abuse, you know? It's something you try when you're 13, but if you're older than that, you should cop on. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) I'm so sorry. So when you did so, this is good, it's fresh in your mind. Um, What kind of Ouija board did you use? Did you make a homemade one? Was it an artisanal? You bought it in a store. (laughs) Who bought it? I love that friend. (laughs) Um, So I'll tell you how what happened to me and my Ouija board. I was about thirteen years old. I was in a little goth group in my school, and uh, we listened to Panic at the Disco. So we were really crazy people. (laughs) And um, the head goth, her name was Neve, right? She wore eyeliner, so (laughs) she was really. I trusted her. She knew her stuff, right? <laughs> and um, my friend, Feck, I know it's gone on the internet, um, but they, they let me say this. They're very cool people. William and Neve, right? They're, toge- they're still together. It's beautiful. Um, sorry, they're, they're together in this story. and It doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't put it up now. <laughs> um, so what happened, right, is like William and William's parents had gone away for the weekend, right, to Marbella. And, uh, you know, like cool people would have a house party. Uh, William came up to me and he was like, Alison, would you like to speak to the dead? <laughs> and um, I was like, sure, feck it, you know, <laughs> I've got nothing on. So um, we did the Ouija board and William's dad worked in an egg factory and had recently retired. So he had a crystal chicken egg cup as a gift from the factory. And uh, when we were... <laughs> <laughs> so we needed to incorporate that into our seance, right? So we made our own uh, Ouija board. We had like uh, letters and numbers. I mean, this is how Irish we were. We even had sorry written down in case, <laughs> in case we needed to apologize to the ghost, right? <laughs> um, and we, we put out the letters and we put out the numbers and this is in William's kitchen. Can I ask now, you're 27 when you did it. Um, did you put a ring of salt around you when you did the Ouija board? No. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, chicken, that is like riding bareback if <laughs> it really is. It really is. You don't know what you're getting. Um, I mean, fair play, you're living your life, but I'm just saying you're taking risks. Um, if, if you don't put a ring of salt around you when you do the Ouija board, right? Uh, a ring of salt keeps away bad spirits, right? And it also keeps slugs away. You don't want any of that shit at a seance, right? <laughs> and and um, William, like, this is how, like, uh, this is how prepared we were, right? We, uh, William had two options of salt. He was like, the Don Carlos salt flakes or the normal table salt. And he was like, which one will I use? And I was like, William, we're going on in this deep. We, we're going to go for the flakes. So we threw about 12 euro worth of flakes around the kitchen, right? <laughs> And we were sat there, we were all organised, and uh, we had the candles and it was beautiful. And we, we kind of put our hands on the crystal chicken egg cup, that was our vessel that we used, right? <laughs> we said, uh, is there anybody there? And um, the crystal chicken egg cup went very strong and violently, I would say, towards X, right? Now, I didn't know what that meant, but I took that as a form of aggression, right? <laughs> And I wanted to get off very quick. So I said, lads, get me off this, get me off this, get me off this, right? And we brought it to goodbye. And I took my hand off. And I said, guys, I can't do the Ouija board with you. And William goes, look, it's fine. Do you want to go into the sitting room while we uh, do the Ouija board in the kitchen? And I was was walking into the sitting room. I was like, I don't know which way this ghost is coming in. Do you know, like, it could come through the sitting room while I'm watching Ricky Lake. (laughs) So I was like, no, I'll sit beside you. I'll sit beside you. And I felt like a spare spare person at that point, right? So I said... uh, do you know what I'll do? I'll, um, I took out a notebook and a pen. I was like, I'll just take down the minutes of the meeting. <laughs> so I was like a little secretary for a ghost, right? <laughs> so William and Neve continued the conversation and they were like, 
uh, what's your name? And I went to A, D, A, G, I, M. And they were like, Adagam, Adagam. Is your name Adam? And I went straight to yes, right? And we felt like Derek Okora at that point. <laughs> and then, then we ran out, we were like, what's your second name? And I went to R-O-U-R. And we were like, is it Rourke? And I went straight to yes, right? And we felt delighted. And then um, we thought so much about setting up the Ouija board, we didn't actually think about what we wanted to ask the ghost. So we're like, uh, do you like tea? <laughs> and the crystal chicken egg cup went straight to yes, right? And we're like, oh, we're on a roll. And we're like, do you like um, biscuits? And he did, he did like biscuits, right? <laughs> So we're finding out a lot. Now, Neve wanted to ask him what it was like to be dead, but you can't ask a ghost. You can't tell a ghost it's dead. You have to pretend that doesn't exist, right? So you just, you just avoid it. It's like if you met O.J. Simpson now, you'd never ask him about the last 20 years of his life, do you know? <laughs> You're like, how's the football? That kind of thing. So Neve said, look, I want to ask him a question. I'm going to ask him in a way that doesn't show that he's dead. And we're like, okay, go for it. She said, <coughs> are you lonely? where you are right now. And the crystal chicken egg cup went very slow, and I would say sadly, right? <laughs> sadly towards yes and circled it. And us teenagers were looking at each other, we all of a sudden had a realization that Jesus, we're all gonna die at some point and we're all gonna feel lonely. And you know, this ghost had emotionally opened himself up to us. And uh, we got the crystal chicken egg cup and we fucked it out the window. <laughs> and... <laughs> 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 we left that ghost hanging there, right? <laughs> and he let us in, do you know? <laughs> we essentially ghosted a ghost, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, my second brush with the occult happened uh, when I went to a Darius concert uh, with my friend Tina, right? And we were, we were coming home from this Darius concert and we were going down a small, uh, small dark road. It was very stormy, very windy rain and it was very spooky, right? And we were about 15 at the time. And uh, we heard this noise that went, ha, ha. And me and Tina stopped and we looked at each other and we just went, Banshee, run. And we started running as fast as we could, right? Now, I don't know if you've ever been running away from a predator, right? But you think of facts involving the predator. So I was trying to think of facts involving banshees. And I was like, right, well, um, a banshee is an Irish ghost. And uh, if you see her, you're going to die. So you may start <laughs> running, right? And I was running. And the faster I was running, the louder the banshee was getting behind me, right? I was, all I could hear was, ah, ah. And like Tina was, uh, she's better at the cardio. She was very far away, right? And... <laughs> In the end, do you know, I was like, if this is a horror movie, I'm going first. So I'm going with dignity. So I just threw myself into a ditch, right? <laughs> I just threw myself in. And I lay in the ditch and I was like, take me, Banshee, take me, all right? And all of a sudden, the noise had stopped. And Tina had stopped running a fair amount away. And we both kind of looked at each other. And we both realized, right, that what we thought was the sound of a Banshee was actually the sound of wind blowing for our hoop earrings. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> guys, you've been so lovely. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was having feelings before I came on, but fuck it, you've exceeded my expectations. And um, I hope you have a lovely evening. Best of luck. Bye. <laughs>